Okay. Okay, so good morning and thank you today for joining us um, on a bank holiday. It shows how determined you are <laughs> to optimize your um, LinkedIn profile. It, this is one of our masterclasses as a taster for what our employability masterclass will look like. So we do have an employability masterclass that encompass that, you know, where we go into our LinkedIn profile even a lot um, deeper. This is just a taster of what that class will look like. Um, so welcome again. And anyway, so why are we doing this? Now, a lot of people, we know that a lot of people we speak to, they really want, you know, they believe they have the skill set to help organizations um, solve problems that they have. And they are really keen to use that knowledge to help provide solutions that impact their community. And even if they can, even the world that it is. And so these people are smart, you know, most of us are smart, we're intelligent, we're hardworking people. We'll be for relocated to England or anywhere else or, or decide to take a career break or because of everything that's going on in the world because of the pandemic, to be made redundant, you know, we're really high achievers. They led teams, they help to resolve issues. And they also help to make decisions on behalf of their organization. So, you know, these are people that, um, Australian people that have just migrated into a new country. You know, before moving there, they were really like, you know, high flyers in their in their industry, in their space. And then they found themselves, you know, relocating to a new country and struggling to get into the marketplace, right? And they start to wonder why that is. And because they're trying to then pay bills, um, you know, just to survive, they decide to take up jobs that do not really reflect their potential. Right, and then they end up getting worked up, get burnt out, and sometimes even getting depressed about it because they're not happy. They're not happy in what, they, what they're doing, and some of them, like I mean, Australian people that moved to England recently, end up doing blue collar jobs. No, there's nothing wrong with blue collar jobs, but the fact is that they don't, they're not enjoying it, right? They they have this experience that they believe that they can, they can apply or help organizations, um, you know, add value to their to their um to the organizations, and they have this qualification that they would like to use, but they're not using that. And so one of the things that um, the reasons that some of them are not being, you know, are not getting to the marketplace. Some of the reasons we've identified are things like, you know, not being able to tr identify the transferable skills and then communicate the transferable skills. Because every every work we do, we actually learn some skills. Even in, even in the blue collar job work, we learn skills, right? And we need to be able to showcase those skills and show how we can transfer those skills that we've learned to our new industry or to our existing industry. Sometimes it's because of the fear or imposter syndrome of thinking, I can't do this. Um, you know, uh, we see a job ad and it's asking for, you know, X, Y, Z, and we only have X. Then we think, no, we can't do Y and we can't do Z. So we, we're not, you know, we're not good enough. We can't do it and we're not going to um, apply for it or we can't even show that we can learn those skills, right? Sometimes it's our CVs are not selling us at all which is actually the case. Um, a lot of the times, uh, CVs are not be, be writing to the hiring manager's needs, right? We just have a generic CV that is just being sent to everybody. And of course, if something is generic, then it's the chances of it being picked up is a lot slimmer, right? Or we're failing our interviews again <laughs> because we don't understand how they're expecting us to answer the questions. Now, I'll give an example. I'll share my own story. Um, when I migrated here, I used to have when I, I came here to, to for university actually, and then after my university, I was looking for jobs, and I used to go for lots of interviews. So in America, I can relate because I got lots of no's, and I kept thinking, what am I doing wrong? I mean, so I was I was getting past, I was getting, I was my so my CV has test telling me well, and I'll talk about how a polygraph CV would not even get you any job interviews, but then I was now going for interviews. And for the most part, I was getting my nose, you know, or, you know, thank you for your time. But on the, unfortunately, you were not successful at this time. And it was not until I learned how to answer questions at interviews that I realized, oh, my God, <laughs> what I had been doing wrong. Right. So sometimes it's, it's actually because we're not answering the questions the way they're expecting you to answer it. And then lack of visibility on LinkedIn. And I hear people saying, oh, I don't want to be on LinkedIn. I'm not into social media. I'm not into social media, but LinkedIn, I don't see that as a social media. I see it as a as a platform where you can showcase your personal brand, right? So it's um it's almost like a friend of mine said LinkedIn is like a billboard. And I just love that word. It's a billboard really. And what does a billboard do? A billboard highlights or showcases what that product is about. And so see yourself as a product, right? And when and on LinkedIn you're trying to ensure that your product is visible to the right people and that your product 
is meeting the needs of the people you want to serve. Okay. So who is our masterclass for? It's, um, I think I've already highlighted some of it. So people that are just located to the UK or really to a new country and struggling to get a job in their, in their marketplace, in their, in their field. People that have a problem crafting an excellent CV. People who often have issues with interviews. People returning to work after a career break. People that are looking to switch careers or people that have been made redundant to, due to the pandemic or pandemic or current job cuts, especially people that have been long serving. So this, you know, I hear people reaching out to me and saying, I haven't written a CV in forever. <laughs> so I don't even know how to go about it because they've been in this job for a long time. And now that they found that they're being, they've been made redundant and of course they need to get another job. So if you're in that space, then this masterclass, our employability masterclass is for you. So who are we about things done so for those of us that those of you that are new that don't really know us we're a training and business analysis consulting company and our mission is basically to close the digital skills gap for the ethnic minorities or underrepresented communities okay and because um there is a the survey to say that um, the ethnic minorities are underrepresented in the tech space in the digital space and we offer customized training programs and consulting services to organizations where we cover a wide range of non-technical digital skills from business analysis social media marketing, UX, UI, project management, product owner, data analysis, et cetera, right? So these are some of the courses that we, we, we cover. And our goal, like I've said, is to help ethnic minorities secure rewarding careers and contribute to a more diverse and inclusive digital workforce. Um, and why are we passionate about that? Because I, I mean, again, back to my own story, I have a finance background, right? So I'm a, I'm a qualified accountant. However, I got tired of number crunching. I just got tired of everything. I just felt it was mundane, month end, the same thing every month. And I really wanted something else. Secondly, I was also tired of being the only ethnic minority in the room. So I thought, you know, well, if I go at maybe if I go to another industry, I would be able to see other people like ethnic minorities like me. And you know, and there's nothing wrong with working with not people that are non-ethnic minorities, but it's always nice to have a diverse workforce, isn't it? To at least to kind of feel like you're not the only one that is different in the room. And I started thinking about what I actually wanted to do next. I I enjoyed finance, I liked finance, I liked numbers. However, I just didn't want to be a, a regular, like typical number crunching accountant. So I then start thinking, okay, but I do like technology. I'd like to learn about new things, new shiny toys. I get into, I, you know, I don't, I, I like to solve problems. I like to, you know, I get, I get, um, I loved being challenged, right? And I got to a point where I just didn't like the same route of every month. I knew it's going to be a month then, so I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I like to just have different things. I get bored easily, I guess, as a summary. And so I said, okay, what can I do? And I said, looking at the technology side of things, using finance or helping finance with technology. And I got to start implementing um, a software called SAP, which is an ERP software for um, for companies and organizations, you know, looking to um, integrate their finance um, functions with other modules within the SAP system. So I said, I know that's so that was a project that I started working on. And it was in this line of working that I also met a business analyst. Now, again, I was in this industry where I was still the only ethnic minority there. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is still not good. And not only was it was also a male dominated industry, right? So where you might be the only female as well. And then in the progress test, I met a business analyst who I was really intrigued by, about how he did his process model. And because like, I like to learn new things, I went and started inquiring and I, you know, and I realized, okay, I can actually do this. I didn't even mind doing business analysis because I already did a subset of it as part of my um, software consulting role, right? So I then, when I did a course and then so, you know, transition into the business analysis space, and I've been doing that ever since. And I've been training on that and other type of non-technical um, role, um, digital roles, right? So enabling you to work in the digital space. Now, why non-technical? Because again, like I said, I'm non-technical. I don't have a coding background. And also, secondly, I feel like they're doing, they're doing the tech space a disservice when they keep pushing coding as the only way to get into the tech space, right? And so it's, again, it's then... Uh, excluding a lot of people that might want to work within the tech space, but think, oh, but I don't like programming. I don't think I have the head for science. I don't think I have the head for maths. So this isn't for me. All right. So again, I'm just on that mission to say, you know what? There is space for everyone in the tech space, if you, in, even if you don't like coding. So that is our goal. 
So what is our promise to you? As if you join our employability masterclass is, you know, you'll get to go into a high paying career within as little as 90 days, even if you've always struggled to get a job in the corporate market. And why is that? Why are we so sure of that? Because we're going to teach you how to sell yourself. We're going to teach you how to be visible to people that would want your services. We're going to teach you how to even explore into the hidden market. So what we call the hidden market. Um, and one of the ways that you get into that hidden market is via LinkedIn, to be honest, where you know, recruiters are coming into your inbox and you and are telling you about roles that are not being advertised and wanting to put you forward for that. So it's 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 those are the tools and skills that we teach you in this, in our masterclass. So what's our what's some of our success stories? So Belinda, we've kind of not used her real name. Um, you know, she was in between jobs um when we met and she was a single mother and she had she, you know, she had gone to a stage where she wanted something better for herself and her daughter. And believe the career and business analysis would help her achieve her desire. Now she was, I mean, when I even spoke with her at the time, you know, she had she had had to um, drop out of university so she could go give birth. Um, and she said she kind of sensed that her mates were had gone ahead of her. She kind of felt like she, you know, she felt like she had failed. However, um, you know, when she finished, when she had given birth, and she was her daughter was, I guess, still um like maybe old enough for her to go back to school. She did go back to school to finish her degree, and so we, what we kind of do when we have our first conversation is trying to understand your knowledge. You know, um, understand we you have to know yourself, know yourself, and understand you know why you're doing what you want to do, why you're going to the industry you want to go into, and what do you understand about business analysis, right? And it's all because we do that so that it's from a place of understanding what you're getting into and also knowing that it's from a place of, because I enjoy this type of work, not necessarily because of the money, because sometimes money isn't everything. Money, you might get the money, but you might still be miserable, right? So we then started to identify what skills that, she, that was already transferable, came on our program, and on our program, when you're done with our program, you're <laughs> learning things like critical skills, or anything like researching, learning things like communication, negotiation, how to facilitate sessions, how to be organized, how to solve problems, critical thinking and other skills such as stakeholder management documentation etc so that's one of, one of the things you learn in our BA program and she was able to apply what she learned by working on a life project which we get you know we connect you into a life project um, where you then to apply those skills that you've learned and she's acquired um, a job since progressing her career and you know she's bought a, a house now um, for her and her daughter and I you know and for me the reward from everything else was when she sent me a message to say Thank you so much. All this has happened as a result of my BA training. I couldn't have done it if I didn't get the career boost. Okay. Then we had another um um another of our, our clients. His name is Jonathan. Again, he came on a business analysis accelerated course um, when he was looking for a way of deciding what to do. He was a footballer, you know, but he was looking to transition. And I guess you know it's just to, to let you know that this you know um that you can't because of your maybe say okay like he was a footballer and he wanted to transition into a different industry because he wasn't getting as much play um, time as he wanted to and he was thinking about you know he was a graduate and he was thinking about okay what's next for me so um in one of the reviews that he sent he acknowledged that our cv clinic helped him transform his cv and now he's helping other people improve their cvs too with the knowledge that he gained from our, our clinics and again, after graduating from our program, a few weeks after he got a job as a business analyst, and he has since moved on or transitioned his career to becoming a penetration tester and an ethical hacker. Okay, so we're very proud of our clients. We have lots of stories to tell, and we can find some of them, some of the videos on our website as well, of where people are, and you know, our past students have worked are working in places like Cognizant, in places like Capital, in the World Bank, in HSBC. So, you know, we're really proud of where our clients um, have ended up in and they're also being trailblazers in their specific industries. We're really proud of that. So some of the programs that we run, some are free and some are paid. So our Slingstone Sidebar is a program we have every month. It's actually uh, like an hour every month talking about different technology, um, you know, basically impacting our community with what's going on, all the trends that's going on in the industry. We have our masterclass, like one like we're having today. We have, so this is a free session. We also have a paid session, like our employability masterclass. We have our business analysis accelerated program. We have our design thinking program. We have our program management program is not on here. We have our project management program, product owner program. We've got a corporate training where we train our upskill employees within organizations. We have CV clinics and mentorship sessions. Um, you know, and a whole host of others, some of our programs that we run. 
So the topic that we're going to be covering in our employability masterclass will be basically understanding the job market in the new country. So we're going to be teaching you how to even start to understand the job market where you are, because it's very, 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 I mean, um, you know, Chip Lira, I'm sure you'll understand that it's different where you are right now to where you're planning to go to, right? So it's the, the way the job market works in that country is going to be different. Again, how to develop your um, CV and cover letters, optimizing your LinkedIn profile, preparing for job interviews, navigating workplace culture and norms. And that's another key thing because sometimes we go into a new space and we don't realize that the culture and the way of working is totally different from where we're coming from. We're going to teach you how to develop your networking and communication skills. And then of course, it's in this day and age where we have AI taking over, or they claim that it's about to take over the world. I mean, it will take, it's taking over in terms of improving processes. It's not necessarily going to replace human beings, but it's going to replace those that do not know how to work with AI. So again, you know, it's how do you keep yourself professionally developed, continually educating yourself. We'll, we'll come up with a roadmap on how you can keep doing that. Any questions so far? Okay, I'll take that as a no. So uh, let's start to look at so how we optimize our LinkedIn profile. Like so today's a test and what we're going to be um, concentrating on today is actually optimizing our headlines. And when we call our headlines, this is what we call our headlines, this part of your um, LinkedIn profile because this is a very 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 important part and people don't people don't understand that so i know chip Lero, you said you have a linkedin profile in america i think we're connected on linkedin is that correct yes yes we are yes okay so i'm going to actually this is where yes i think we have some time so i'm going to ask you chip Lero, to share your linkedin profile and america you're also going to share yours i'm going to stop sharing so chip Lero, you share are you are you able to share your linkedin profile with us Yes, I think you can do that. Okay, please share. Can you see it? Yes, I can see. Okay, good. All right, Namaka. What now when you look at Chipilero's um LinkedIn profile, what's the first thing that I'm not I'm not saying you have to be an expert, so don't don't know, you know, what's the first thing? I mean, let's just say you're looking at it um with a new fresh eye. What's the first thing that you think about when you look at this profile? Um, there's no profile picture, first of all. Uh -huh. So what does that mean? What does that make? How does that make you feel if you don't see a profile picture? Um, she's invisible. We can't see her. We don't know her. We can't know her. We can't see her. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Vivian? Yes? My profile has a photo though. So I'm surprised why it's looking like that. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, I have I have okay, let, let me connect with you. And maybe if I need... Maybe, let me connect and then maybe maybe sometimes some people so if you accept my connection let's see okay because sometimes you get that where the pictures uh, only come up when you're okay now i got two more give me two more um suggestions or two more things that jump out of you um she didn't uh, list her skills she just listed her role in african union but she didn't list her actual skills that make her occupy that particular role. Okay. And um, those are the two main things I see. Okay, those are the two main things. Okay, all right, that's fine. So Chipliro, no picture. Nemeka has said no picture, and you haven't um listed out your roles or experience, right? Okay. <laughs> That's correct. And I just accept I just accepted your connect. So I'm connected with you. I don't know if that uh, will let, make it. Let me see. Let me refresh it and see if it makes a difference. Okay, so that there it is. Oh, so that's so now there's a picture. So I guess we need to we need to go to your settings to see if there's something you've said but we said the only people that can see your yeah, profile okay. picture or people that are connected with you because then it's not it's not doing you any service if that's your yeah. if that's what you have because recruiters mm -hmm. can't see you and one of the things we teach is mm -hmm. you know first of all when a recruiter sees your cv they're going to go jump on your linkedin profile right so having a picture so of course we don't send our cvs with our pictures but having a picture kind of puts a face to the name and you kind of, you know, they can see your personality. That's one thing, right? It's almost like, okay, we know this person. We have a lovely smile, nice picture. You know, we can, you know, it's almost like you can relate. You know, it's more relatable when you've met somebody face-to-face -face than when you're speaking to somebody you've never seen. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. 
yes so that's so that's always it's a good thing okay that's uh true. hi hi genica nice to nice for you to join us how are you and then i'm going to then go to you no i can say you're turn to be on the hot set <laughs> Um, Vivian, are we through with, with mine? Yes, <laughs> we're, we're, true, we're true with yours. Okay. We're, go, we're going to come back to yours in a minute, but we're true with yours for now. Okay. Okay. But, okay. No, Maka, this, no, this is you, right? So, no, no, Maka is no, Maka, sorry. This is you. Okay. So now Chipiliro, it's your turn to to tell me what you think when you see Namaka's um profile. Okay. Um uh, she has her photo, that's right. The full uh -huh. name is there. Uh business analyst, but maybe she could say a bit more than just to say business analyst, because what kind of business analyst and what kind of business, something that will um, provide a niche that she operates in, I think that would be nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so sure of adding skills or that, but also on the, um, on that uh, dashboard behind the profile picture, I don't know what we call it. The banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the banner. I think, I think it would be nice if she, mine doesn't have anything also, but I think <laughs> <it would> be... <laughs> So I must duty, but I think that <laughs> I think the banner is quite important uh -huh. uh, to, add, to add some life to the profile. Thanks, fantastic. So I'm happy. I'm happy you noticed that because you know sometimes when we look at ours, ours we think ours is okay, but when you're looking at somebody else's, then you start to see because you know you talk about the banner and you're saying, oh, mine doesn't have a banner either, but you know the banner would be nice to have a different banner or like a, a banner that kind of highlights, right? So. Um, what you do or what you're about so that's so that's fine thank you Ginika. nice to, for you to join us um are you on linkedin yes i am okay so <laughs> I, I say that very tentatively because i know um, you do <laughs> i haven't updated my firstly i you know i'm a social media phobe huh. so i'm on linkedin because and um this is why i need this masterclass because there's so many things I need to do. I will give you an example. I still have my old job on my LinkedIn and I've oh. been in my new job for three years. <laughs> that's how Welcome. bad it is. I'm already well. admitting my fault. I no, that's why I hate I hate it. I hate it. If you had come yeah. in earlier, if you had come earlier, I was saying to I was saying to um Chief Lee Ran Namakar that basically a lot of people are like oh the linkedin is a social media platform we're not into social media however the i, I i'm not, i i mean i i think i'm you can't be as bad as i am Ginika. i'm a social media fool um i am on but linkedin i am on linkedin because i am you know it's a first of all it's a, a, a social media that is different in terms of it's a networking platform it's where you can actually meet your next um boss or your next hiring manager you know where you can meet with recruiters where you can actually show your showcase your personal brand and the values that you're bringing to an organization so it's actually a lot of things that you know it's a platform where genuinely i've got i've gotten recruiters inboxing me and just basically headhunting me from LinkedIn. So you're not having to look for work, right? Because with the, with the right profile. So it's it's a it's it's one social media platform that if you wanted to like, you know, okay, very social media full, but this is one media plat social media platform that I think that actually generates results and it has very beneficial to you. So it's no, a good a hundred percent. And I've witnessed it with my direct friends, you know, my uh -huh. brother. So I you know I've seen the power that it yields. It's just yeah. that I'm not tapping into it and I and I don't know how to tap into it. And I know, you know, obviously it's like a tick box exercise. You can fill in stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is <laughs> So this is old. This, no, this is, is so this old. Is... But anyway. <laughs> no, but it's okay. But it's fine. I hi, mean I'm... Everybody. <laughs> Hi, hello, hello, hi, hi, hi. So you know, this is it's a safe space. So please, this is um one of the things that it's not we're not trying to um catch anybody out. It's it's we're here to learn. You know, we're all learning and even mm -hmm. I always learn from all the sessions. So it's not for anybody to take it personal. But however, mm -hmm. you know, it's every you know, I'm very big on different different perspectives. So like, you know, Chippy Chippy um just showed Niameka 
her own what her own view of seeing her profile was and even though she didn't have a banner she just realized okay i don't have a banner i didn't, <laughs> you don't have I didn't a banner, even know right? you could have a banner this is what i'm just like what <laughs> i'm hearing this on the first time i was like but then what would you put as the banner I was just so that's like, a, and that's that's all we do on our so this is just a taste of our employability masterclass and the whole idea of the employability masterclass is basically to within you know get within 90 days to guarantee you to get into like a high um, paying career of your choice based on all the things that you've learned and putting that into as long as you put that into um you know apply what you've learned right into your job search or into um getting transition into the next um the next in space or next industry or next career okay yeah. so I need um, the whole rebranding on LinkedIn. That's <laughs> complete. Like I need to rewrite the whole thing, but continue. <laughs> All right. Okay. No. Okay. Fair enough. So I'm going to. Uh, who should I ask now? Okay. Chippy, give me one thing about um, Genica's, um LinkedIn profile that you think she can improve, and Nemeka, give me one from you as well. So Chippy, let's start with you. Hi, Abiodun. How are you doing? Okay. Chippy, what oh, do you? Yeah. Let's start with you. Uh -huh. Janika, um, I mean the obvious one, the banner, <laughs> just like <laughs> just like you have pointed out it already. Uh yeah, I think it changes the outlook and uh, you know, adds a bit of life. So it's it's really the profile is really looking dry. And um yeah, I mean if she hadn't mentioned the fact that this is uh from her last job, we wouldn't have known. So at this point mm -hmm. we're assuming that she works as a special event specialist that mm -hmm. make a week, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. yeah maybe let's see down there and then it says act on activity says she hasn't posted lately so i think if she would have <laughs> <laughs> you know posted one or two things it would it would be nice for that sentence to not be there and the only way is to um you know to post something obviously um <laughs> 186 connections i think she can do better to have more mm -hmm. connections we are mm -hmm. living in a global world. I, <laughs> although I'm not active, but I think I have more connections, more you than do. a 500. So I you think do. she can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All I right. Think she can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chippy. Thank you. Okay, now, Maka, what, what, what's your... Chippy has, <laughs> Chippy has actually said most, but, like, I also pointed out in her own profile, um, Ginika didn't actually list her um skills this is just a role she um held at make a wish uk i think uh -huh. so she needs to actually list her um skills so that it can make her more employable and visible thank you connections thank you okay uh Abiyadun, are you on linkedin nice of you to join us can you mute or mute yourself sorry Morning, Abiodun. How are you doing? Hello. Okay. All right. Um, I can't hear you if you're speaking. Okay, that's fine. Let's let's continue then. Let's... Um, I can't hear him. Hello. Okay. All right. So, okay. So again, all right. Now let me tell you guys. So some of the things that you guys have said is very valid. Um, now, now the statistics to show that a high percentage of recruiters, like, or like almost 90% of recruiters or hiring managers, they will not look at your profile if you do not have a photo because, you know, um, especially they're searching, like, you know, I said earlier on that when you see someone's picture, it kind of, you feel like it's a connection, right? So a nice photo, a nice headshot with a nice smile. So Ginika, you smiling is very nice. It's nice, it's a nice smile. I can kind of read <laughs> what you look like or see what I feel like I already know you just by looking at your picture. Um again, they might not, some of them, some of the shabby ones might not might look at your connections and think, oh, okay, she's not really, <laughs> she's not really uh, uh active on this platform. So maybe you know, let's go to somebody else that has more connections. In fact, and even LinkedIn as as a, as a an algorithm itself would ne would not have pushed you to be visible if you don't have minimum power connections. I think it's changed since though. 
but that and then it was like 500 first level connections was like if the minimum you should at least have for even linkedin to help to push you and when we say what does, what do we mean by that because linkedin is powerful enough to start to come in and if there are jobs that come up they can start to say to you to apply for these jobs because your skill set matches those jobs do you understand so again if you don't have your connections like 500 level if you're not active on the, on the platform you wouldn't be getting those notifications come through to you okay um you, if they don't cannot understand your about field, if this is not telling them what you're doing. So again, let's know. So again, okay, I'm going to ask a question now. What do you think is the difference between your CV and your LinkedIn profile? Somebody tell me. JP, um, you what, what, what you said about, you know, with your CV, you don't have your picture. So with your LinkedIn, you have your picture. So it's easier to see if you can forge a connection with the person. Um, I think there's very close similarities with your CV and your LinkedIn because effectively you should reflect, they should they should be the same thing, right? You can't have something completely different on your LinkedIn that you have on your CV, which would be really odd. But mm -hmm. I think perhaps you can, um, whereas your CV is very limited to two pages, perhaps on your LinkedIn you can expantiate on things. I don't uh -huh, know because uh -huh. I haven't used it effectively. Uh -huh. So, you know, you could have, um, like you said, like your skills and maybe in your CV, you might not have put that or omitted to put that, whereas um, LinkedIn is a bit more, I don't know, structured. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's a bit more structured that everyone's just kind of the same, whereas your CV, you can chop and change it in a very different format to somebody else. So LinkedIn, you know, you've got your about, you've got your activities, you've got your skills. It's a very structured regimen, I guess. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> this is me no. guessing I haven't used it in years. <laughs> no, no, but that's good. Well, that's correct, though. Yeah, you're right in the sense that your know, CV is a formal, your CV is a formal document, really, right? And basically, it showcases your skills, your academic um, achievements, your professional achievements. But sometimes it's limited to what you can showcase because it's some organizations might ask you for two pages. I mean, in America, I know it's that's the maximum is two pages. But here in England, luckily, there's it, it, there's no law. But I mean, ideally, two pages should be at least the first two pages should be able to sell who you are and what you're bringing to the table, right? Unlike uh, when we look at our uh, LinkedIn, on the, hand, on the other hand, it it basically, like you said, you know, it allows you to showcase your personal brand, right? It showcases your, you know, what value you're bringing to the organization. You can actually expand on more of your skill sets, right? You so your 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 LinkedIn is like an extension of your CV. So yes, it's not a copy, a copy of your CV because I mean there's no point in my coming in to look to a LinkedIn if I have your CV in front of me. But having your CV and looking at your LinkedIn profile will tell me more about you. You know, it's so like uh, somebody like I was saying to them, a friend of mine said it's actually like it's like a billboard, right? What does a billboard do? It kind of showcases why you should be using this product, right? And so your 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 product Product. you're selling yourself via your CV but also extending that in, in your LinkedIn profile by selling your personal brand your values what you can bring to your table your you know your achievements the project you've worked on you can actually showcase that on your um on your um, you know on your LinkedIn profile so that's actually um so that's so that's the major difference so again so if recruiter is coming to see you looking at, at your LinkedIn and is reading the same thing on your CV well, I mean, what do you think? The likelihood is they're just going to pass on to the next person that is more interesting. They're like telling them more about themselves, right? So um, they want to see a profile that is easily readable. You know, when they come to you about us, they want to know more about what, you, what you're about, who you are. You know, I mean, ideally, you know, you should even come up with a call to action to say if you want to, if you want to speak to me, um, you know, email me here or direct message me there or something like that, right? And it's just like, look at, let's look at your LinkedIn as the platform where you can give your, 60 second elevator speech okay so you know or elevator pitch you know how you're trying to sell a product and you say you've got 60 seconds like uh, it takes seconds the time it takes for an elevator to come from the ground level to the top level like that 60 seconds if that's all you have you should be able to sell yourself so think about it like that so, you know what am i trying to showcase what am i trying to sell when i'm actually telling them about myself okay so like i said today what we're going to be focusing on today is our headline so this is what we call our headlines now I like the fact that I look using using Genica's um profile. Why? Because Genica has done the exact thing that um we the do we say do not do. Oh, your profile is doing the exact thing we say do not do in the sense that your your you haven't said who you are here, right? You basically just said special event specialist. And how is that? How does LinkedIn know that? Because it's taking it from your job here. Okay, that's the default. LinkedIn will always take this take this from your job. You you know if you don't if you don't edit it and add your own keywords and do, use your keywords it's just take the 
your job title the, the latest one and it will give it put it here okay so we're going to work on this part of our linkedin today in our tester session so let's start thinking about it and by the time we're done we know we are one step closer to getting ourselves um you know visible i guess on on linkedin right any questions so far Oh? Yeah, sorry, can we start with the banner? No, um, we're not that's not what this okay. class is about. So oh, okay. the, we'll teach you the banner in our in the full class. So this is just a taster, okay. right? So oh, okay, cool. we'll teach Thank you how you. to write, we'll teach you how to design your banner in the full class. So today is just to talk to to tell you how to kind of um ensure that your headline is is speaking to the recruiter, right? Okay. Does that make sense? I mean, a good photo, like we said, it has to be a headshot. It has to be a nice photo where you can smile, where people can see you. That's one of the key things. Um, but then, the you know, today we're actually just looking at our headlines. All right. So I'm going to put up my profile here. Um, So I'm going to ask you guys to please critique my profile. And <laughs> what do you guys think? What can be improved? Because I'm always working on my LinkedIn profile. So please tell me what, what you see, what you think is good, and what you think is bad. I'll start with you, Genika. And we're looking at just, just look at this, at this, this line, the headline. Vivian, I think we are brainwashed to think that yours is already perfect. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not look at that. Let's not look at that. No, no. Honestly, no, no, no. Let's not see that as perfect. It's not perfect. We keep. I'm sure by next week I'll have changed this. I'm always working on my profile. Always. It's like a billboard. You're always changing it. You're, you're trying to improve yourself. You're always changing it, right? Um. Mm -hmm. But okay, okay. So it's well. Please let's not look at it like that. So Ginika, back to you. Yeah. Um. I really like the the key captions, you know, diversity and inclusion advocate. I really like that because that's why I'm, I'm I also do that. Um, founder empowering, you know, you know, in tech with a snapshot without me even going into the detail of your uh -huh. LinkedIn. I can already kind of get a picture about who you are and what drives you career wise. Okay, thank you. Or what you're interested in. Thank you. All right, Nemeka, I'm coming to you. Your profile actually looks very perfect. It's not you perfect. Are just, <laughs> you are just okay, okay. Just give us a more recent, you know, picture. Okay, I should give you a recent <laughs> picture. <laughs> Basically, I, I don't have anything to add. You know, perfect. Taking, I... From from this, I I know you already. I know what you're into. I know what you do, and it's fine. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thank you for your kind words. Well, okay, anyway, I hate taking pictures, but I probably need to take a new picture. I, I agree. Um, that definitely have to get a new headshot. That's that's for sure. I've been told that so many times. <laughs> uh, but you know, but okay, but so I so I want I wanted to show you guys this. It's not because of any perfection. Honestly, I'm always working on this. I'm always improving this. But your headline. Mm -hmm. so, so I say like, that again. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Vivian. Like mm -hmm. on the founder. Uh -huh. I, I'm, I'm okay with everything also i think it's, it really looks good you know and i love that you have hashtags you know related to your um to your professional profile and your niche on the founder that is the founder of what okay so i'm just saying that i'm a founder of a business right so basically and I, again so thank you so i should probably say founder of as but i'll you know you have to be very clever because you only have 220 characters to work mm -hmm. with um here so you and you know and so you have to be clever in what you in what you um how you use it i was even thinking of taking out founder completely because i don't know if it if it adds to anything right but yes i mean yeah. i think what the founder has done for me is getting people into my inbox asking to want to sell me stuff <laughs> so maybe i might need to take it off yeah. um yeah. and yeah so thank you so that's you know thanks thank you for that because that's also something i've been thinking about thinking do i really want to put the founder then maybe i need to take it out but when you talk about the hashtags here yeah, actually this is what linkedin the algorithm has said i didn't put this in but it's based on the posts i make it starts to figure out what you what you talk about right and it starts to then put this here okay um and again so i use a hashtag sometimes it would also pick that up based on the hashtag that i'm putting in my posts okay but what's your headline so this is what we call our headline meaning so again i know like i said linkedin will default to what you tell it you do 
um, as your role, but basically it should really be highlighting or telling the hiring manager what your high value skills are. Okay, what are you good at? What if I'm if I'm getting to hire Vivian? What is Vivian going to bring into my table? Okay, so Vivian, if I'm looking as an organization, I'm looking to see how we can improve the um, or increase our, you know, the, the represented minorities within our space that are non-coders, or maybe we can bring Vivian in to help us do that, right? Because I've put that, this is what I want to do. I'm an advocate for diversity and inclusion. I'm looking to, so if we're looking to, um, you know, improve our product offering or our services, Using the digital technology, or maybe we should, you know, Vivian is going to be there, right? Because those are some of the keywords that the recruiters are going to be looking for. So it's trying to understand the keywords that the recruiters are going to be are, are looking for that can identify you as somebody that they should be speaking with. Okay, so um, it's basically how you make yourself start to become visible within within um, LinkedIn. So when you look at a lot of people's profile, they just let LinkedIn put in there. Um, you know, job title. So like you said, Chippy, when you said to Genica, okay, you're a special events person, but doesn't really say much, you know. Or when you said to Naimaka that, okay, you're a business analyst, but so what? What kind of business analyst are you, right? If I'm looking for a business analyst, I would be looking for a specific type of business analyst, maybe a technology business analyst, or maybe a cloud BA, or a business analyst that understands stakeholder management or something like to that, you know, to that effect. So if I'm doing putting all those keywords in, you're, in America, you're not going to be showing up on LinkedIn as somebody that I should be speaking with, okay? So we need to be very, very clear on who we are and and how do we start to understand those keywords? And so this is, um, I'm going to actually give us an exercise, um, 10.58 out, because I was thinking for, we're going to finish at 11.30, we can probably stretch it to 11.45, but I'll give you guys 20 minutes to do this exercise and then we're going to come back and start to play around with it, okay? I'll put the exercise in the chat. Um, let me know when you guys have got it. And then we can on the on the profile, what is ideal to um highlight there? It should it be for somebody who is work who's on a full-time job, for example, should uh -huh. it be the position or something that is directly linked to their skills? It should be your skills. So just so when we do this, um exercise that we're about to do if I could only just find it um you'll see what I mean can you guys all see my screen yeah sure yes mm -hmm. all right so what I want you guys to do is go and google in the on you know the job boards even on LinkedIn itself because LinkedIn has jobs um or you know any job board of your choice or multiple job boards as it pleases you so select six job descriptions or titles that you want to apply to or you roles that you think you can do right and so when you get the job titles you um you transfer it so you can actually copy this into a word document if you wanted to and you can tr you transfer the titles to um to this document here and then under each job title list out the skills that are required for each of the job descriptions so you copy the skills and paste it here okay identify the common thread so when you've done one two three Full stop. When we come here, I'll, this is how I'll teach you how to identify the common thread, and basically how we can start to then look at those keywords that are that are coming through. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. So please, I know some of you because last time some people were like doing six different jobs. No, it doesn't help us. If we want it to be the same, similar. So some jobs might not have different job titles, but it's the same type of skills they want, right? So let's kind of let's kind of just concentrate on one particular type of job you want to do so if it's like for example if you want to be a business analyst you can do business analysis product owner because they're kind of similar if you want to be a communications consultant communications consultant um relationship building consultant or something like that because i think they're kind of similar skill sets you understand so um you can use those type of job titles but if you're doing if you want to be if you're looking at a communications consultant and then looking at a um a scientist or data scientist, there are two different types of roles and they might need two different types of skills. So we'll not be able to get get, get those keywords that are relevant to you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I it's 11.04. I'll, well, let's go, let's come back here at 11.24. Oh, Namaka is sharing. Fantastic. Thanks, Namaka. Good. Okay. Okay, so I was able to find just two with... Um... <laughs> Just two business analyst roles, really? 
<laughs> okay, okay fair not like just to, but I was just trying to get um put in other details um in the table. So that's what actually put my time. So um the okay. first was um junior business analyst role. That's mm-hmm. actually what I'm I'm looking out for because mm-hmm. I'm still new to business analysis. Okay. So these are the skills and the first one I um picked out. I was actually typing them out to find I could actually copy and paste. I'm sure we that, said it should uh, copy and paste. Okay. <laughs> Sure, the, um, what the instruction the instruction was to said copy and paste okay and, like, and i said okay. do i only said do one two three not the whole thing there's a reason why but it's fine <laughs> because if you had done just one two three i've got to like at least four or five within the okay. timeline okay so these are the skills so you just try to copy the skills that are required all right fair enough yes okay then um, come on trade i was actually confused whether you meant come on trade with what i already have skills i already have in place right or with the jobs, each of the jobs, what's common with each and every one of them, or what's common with what I have, each of them. So which is why I said um we'll do just one to three. So if you just go scroll back up to the instructions, I think the instructions said um if you just go back up, please. Okay. Yeah, so I said we we should do one to three and then when we come to four, we'll, when we get back, I'll show you how to do that. Right. So basically the common thread or the common skills so or the things that are common amongst them so it's like you know the same things that they keep okay. asking for so it might be analytical it might be communication, communication. right so, yes yeah, so, that's what they keep but asking. It's, so it's basically um what so yes yeah, so i was going to teach you guys how to do that um now i've put i've put a site a website in the chat i'm, I'm okay thank you now so i'm going to share, share my screen okay. again okay. um yeah continue That's what we call a word, a word cloud, right? So uh, let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, can, I can. You all, can, you all, can you all see my screen? Okay, fine. Um, I'm just going to expand that. So so what, what this screen is basically showing is I've, I was looking for, I used the project manager role and I went in and I copied and pasted all like the roles that I found. I found like, I think it was three or four, right? And I just pasted it here. So you're going to do very similar for yourself. So paste it, copy and paste those skills that they're asking for from the job spec that you found. Paste it here, in here. Have you, have you guys managed to open the, the website? Because I put it in the chat. When you do that, right? When you, when you paste that job, the job description, as many as you found. So don't think it's just one. As many as you found, you paste it here and you click on visualize here. It then gives you your word cloud here, which is here. Okay. So those things that are shouting out, those are basically what is telling you that it's the common thing they're asking for. So me, because I didn't really put only skills, I put the whole thing in here. You'll see experience and all that. But it's but the thing I'm taking, I'll be taking from here is that okay, obviously want me to have worked on projects. Obviously, if I'm a project manager, that's very key. It wants me to have done have some sort of um methodology. So agile is one of them. Um maybe I need to be managing teams, that's very obviously. So that's a skill they wants me to have. Um Scrum is another thing. Obviously, to work with a team, um, project experience, right? So the so sorry, you, whatever. Ruben, sorry, uh-huh. sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, you know the fine. ones that are coming out in red, then black, then orange, then yellow. Is that yes. an order of preference? So the red is like the ones that's bold. Then the it's bold, black. The, yeah, the ones that shout out at you are the ones that is saying that it's very, it's a common thing that it's saying, okay. right? And then the yellow then is the, like yeah, the a yellow, desirable. The, yeah yeah it might be desirable right so the the smaller they become it's almost saying okay and you can actually so we can actually um i think this one does not even have some of the world class can actually you can actually tell it okay i only want like the ones that are 10 what is this under here like i only want so if i do 29 let me see so it can have totally 29 so i'm only looking at 29 key skills and then you know what i mean it reduces that right so um here because i said 50 if I said I want top 10 now, let's see what it tells you. And I visualize. So this is the top 10 it's coming up with for me. 
it doesn't really make a lot of sense but that's because i didn't I, I i wasn't patient enough to kind of just get the skill i just put everything in here and i played around with it right but with you guys you guys have put your skills in there so it should be able to tell you basically based on the skills the recurring skills do you know what i mean does that make sense yeah so yeah. what we put in there is just the like say one um one set of uh skills no no put all the skills that you've identified in the job description okay so in the job description that you found put all the skills that you've identified in the job description right put it all here in your word cloud and let's see what it shows okay. what it comes up with i'm going to ask somebody to share their screen and just let's see what it's coming up with who, who wants to, who wants to go first Should I pick somebody? Don't pick me, please. <laughs> yeah, Chipo, <laughs> you go first. <laughs> <laughs> you, go, you go first. It doesn't matter. It's, it's just practice, right? This is something that we, we're not going to finish it today, but it's just to start to give you guys a taster of what you can do with your profile. So, Chipo, go first, please. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still trying to press it in, though. Press it in. Yeah, that's okay. All right, who has finished theirs? Namaka, have you finished yours, Organica or Abiodun? Yes, I have. Okay, Namaka, go on then. Okay. So, you have the same data for sure. Uh, visualization. So, Why so don't possess so modeling? So that's okay. it. So you put 50, let's put down to 30. Let's see, first of all, I visualize. Okay, so okay, here, yeah, so it's, it's data, obviously, strong data visualization modeling. Um, I, I guess I guess we put uh, put some of data science or so science is going on there. Okay. Um, so the key things that they want you to have is modeling data, visualization. Um, then other skills sets like interpersonal skills, communication, right? Yes. And obviously be knowledgeable in what you're doing. So those are your keywords. Those are the keywords that you want your headlines to start to start to showcase right for starters mm -hmm. so um now okay so first of all i you you have to increase your connections on linkedin okay. and you do that by inviting um start off with your first um first line connection so like your friends classmates you know you can you can even google um or search on linkedin based on alumni so like schools people that went to your school find them and just invite them and you know we do, don't just put a message to say like you know um, I see we went to the same school you might know them you might not know them you know I'm always wanting to um, reach out to um, alumni and you know let's connect type thing okay mm -hmm. and so just to start to increase your increase your connections because um, first of all there's something that LinkedIn calls your all-star so when it gives you an all-star on your profile I, you've completed all the different um characters or different sections of the of the of your LinkedIn profile. You get an all star. Initially before you could get an all star, they want you to have 500 connections. I think they've reduced it now to like 50. But but then but the algorithm is still not going to be making and you know, pushing you through if you're not if you don't have like 500 connections and you're not active on LinkedIn. Right. So so that's one of the things you should start to work on is basically you know increasing your connections. And I think it's the same for you, Genica, as well. Okay, I, I I'm not sure you didn't answer me if you had a LinkedIn profile, but if you did, then that uh, um that's something that you need to. Maybe I'm oh. sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, I think this is an obvious answer, but for somebody like me whose LinkedIn is really outdated, before I start inviting <laughs> people to connect, am I supposed to like do a revamp first and then so, invite people to connect? So when you're inviting your friends, your friends and family, it really doesn't really matter because they know you. Right. It's when mm -hmm. so and as you're doing that, so do it in parallel, right? Um, mm -hmm. you have um so I have somebody just coming in, but the person is actually late though, but I mean, admit the mm -hmm. person. So yeah, you have so you have 
your friends know you so that's fine so you're trying to improve your improve your visibility anyways right and mm -hmm. then you're revamping your linkedin because you want to start to reach out to maybe people within your industry within your sector hire, you know mm -hmm. possible recruiters mm -hmm. before we do that you want to make sure that your linkedin is you know is speaking or is basically speaking to them and showcasing what you what you can bring to the table okay mm -hmm. okay Okay, does anyone yeah, else want to hear me? Oh, yes, I can have you. Yes. Now I can hear you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Yes, I'm on LinkedIn. My network has been a bit terrible today. Okay, you're on LinkedIn? Lessons um, learned. Yes, I am. Lessons learned. I'm not going to use my mobile phone for the next connection. I was <laughs> okay. thinking it's something I'll do on the move. But now, nice. now that it's not going to work. So. so if you've been to my master class, you know that we, we always, we're always hands on. We don't do things on the move. <laughs> yeah, right. that, well, it was a friend of mine that sent me the link. Okay. He's actually in UK, but I'm in Lagos. All right, that's fine. So this is my first time, though. All right, yeah, nice to meet you. So are you, I uh, just checked you out. Are you an audit manager? Is that you? On LinkedIn? Mm -mm. I'll be able to unlock you there. Yeah, I've seen a bit of the ACA. So um, what, what's your what's your role? But there are lots of so, data. Data. Just give me a minute. Yeah, All right, that's fine. Minute, let me run. Okay. All right. Somebody was sharing their screen in a, um, a minute. Hmm. That was me. But it was oh, it's... Okay. No, I could see your I could see your cloud reader. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's. Hmm. I think I'm doing the same. The same lessons as my brother here because this phone is not doing me good. All right, that's fine. Okay, yeah. that's okay. That's all right. Okay, but um, just because I'm looking at, I, I don't want to take anybody's time. Um, but, but, um, yeah. So let's try and see if we can wrap it up by noon. I'm already running. Um, overrunning, and I'm sorry about that. But let me, so let me share my screen and so okay. So we've done our keywords, right? So with those keywords now, this and this is how you start to help you to. Um, tailor your headline, your LinkedIn headline, right? So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show my um, presentation again. Um, let me tell me where you can see it. Can you see my screen? Yeah, sure. So, you know, so, <laughs> yeah, so, you know how I said to you guys, okay, that this is basically highlighting the things that I need to be showing. So if I was, if, for example, I was looking at a project manager role, I'd probably put in um, project manager, um, scrum advocate, um, you know, uh, client manage, management relation, relation officer or something. Like I'm just saying things out of the fly. But what I did was because I know we have a communications consultant here, so Chipo, I don't want for you. And um, because we had a business analyst at during the break, I actually went and I said, okay, let me start to give examples of what that or your word cloud would have brought up for you and what you do not you then have how you can then transfer translate that into your headlines, your keywords, right? So for example, this is your consultant headline. So using keywords basically based on what we've just done, you can put yourself as a communications consultant strategic messaging, PR and social media expertise, um, expertise, driving brand awareness and reputation management, right? So these are keywords. I'm, I don't know if that's what you um, what you got in your cloud chipo. Yeah, just uh, some of them, yeah. Some of them, exactly. So yeah. I'm just trying to show you how you can then use that, right, as your headline, right? Or you can write a sentence. You can decide I'm going to put it as a sentence. So combining expertise in strategic messaging, PR, and social media, your communications consultant committed to driving brand awareness and reputation management for clients across diverse industries, right? So you, you come up with your with your sentence, with your message. This is like, your, remember we're saying that LinkedIn is like your personal brand, like your billboard, right? So this is your message. So when a, a recruiter is putting in the keywords because recruiters actually search on keywords based on the description that they've been given and they have strategic messaging social media you will come up whichever way you've written it because you've used those keywords to write yourself a sentence does that make sense yeah it does can i just copy this one for mine this is perfect <laughs> <laughs> oh you'll get i will send out the slides and pdf and you can copy it <laughs> but make sure that make sure it's not just about copying make sure that you have the skills okay yeah yeah okay <laughs> all right and then i did one for you for you Nemaka, as well because i know you're a technology business analyst and again so you saw we saw your keywords right we had data driven we had um, we had um 
he had did he have a he had process i think he had modeling i didn't put modeling yeah. in here but right okay but i've kind of said okay data driven business analysis technology expert process optimization analytics insightful decision making so analytics will cover all your tableaus all the different like you know um data modeling that they want you to know anyways right so okay. analytics just kind of covers that and then i've now used this a complex sentence to say data driven business analyst advanced technology and process optimization expert dynamic and results oriented technology business analyst committed to driving business growth enabling insights of decision making and delivering measurable value to organizations across the diverse industries you can even decide to become more specific across a particular industry that you're familiar yes. with right if you wanted yeah. to do that so so this is just basically start to get you guys to think about how you can use your headlines to, you know, be more oh. visible, to attract recruiters to your profile and to start to use your LinkedIn as a as a, as a job pulling magnet, right? Because people would be wanting to talk to you about the value or about what you can bring to the table for them. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. Any any questions though? Anything that's popped your head. So we have um we have sixteen more minutes. So that's um yeah. Yeah. So can I ask if you have um a varied working background and you then want to now specialize in something, how would you plot that on LinkedIn? Would you say that? Because would it look scattered? Would it look disorientated? Would it look like no. oh my god, you're so amazing at so many things? Like <laughs> how do you how do you then, or effectively, do you then um, go into the varied uh, work history and then tailor it with this optimization of keywords, effectively, to try and home it in that even though I've done a variety of stuff, it's all interrelatable? No, so first of all, what you should start to identify is the transferable skills that you're bringing to the table, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you don't want to put in that, that, um, skills that are diverse that don't have anything to do with your new space. Okay, so you want to, so because you're trying to target, um, target a particular industry, right? And you mm -hmm, have, mm -hmm. you've got, you've done your just analysis of the jobs and to see what the keywords are across that, mm -hmm. you know, across the board, across this particular industry. Use those keywords, right? So where, and this is me not giving you this for free, but this is all we teach. So where you now start to show your diversity, is um, I'll just share my, I'll share my LinkedIn, and. You're now getting this for now for free, Ginika. <laughs> so I'll share, I'll share. Yeah, ask the right question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ask the right question. That's, that's for sure. That's not like asking the right question. Okay, I'll share this. So, like in my um, let me know when you guys can see my screen, please. Um, can you guys see it? Yes, I can see it now. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, uh, so, you're about. Wow. So you can see okay. in my about section then, I've then basically talked about my history. So I've, uh, because you, um, prior to when you joined us, I was saying how I was, I'm was i a qualified accountant and I kind of transitioned into the digital space, right? So here, so I guess by talking about my about section, I'm actually telling them the different, uh, my, the diverse roles I've held in the past and how I've mm -hmm. kind of ended up here. So it's like a story, right? Telling my story oh, wow. of how mm -hmm. I've kind of, uh, so that's where, so that's another place where you can, then showcase what you're bringing, you know, the value you can add to an organization based on your different diverse experience, right? And again, mm -hmm. it's always good to have a call to action. So like to DM, DM me or send me an email or whatever, however you want them to kind of reach out to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the last freebie yes. I'm giving away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> okay, no, ask, I'll answer. Ask me. Vivian, can we add you on our LinkedIn? Oh, please. I'm always looking to um get my yes, please, please, please add me onto okay. your LinkedIn. Yeah. So yeah, so this is just a taste of what we offer in our masterclass. Our masterclass, like we'll go deeper into LinkedIn, we'll definitely become all-star LinkedIn um profile people. That's one of the that's one of the, the the courses. LinkedIn, we have CV writing, we have um how to interview, we have how to identify the hidden job markets, we have how to um actually can familiarize yourself with if you're if relocating for example if you're in a new country how to familiarize yourself with the you know the, the job market in that country and then with communication and networking skills it's all covered in our master class so i think there is um further information on in the chat if you uh if you want to sign up today um i think you can indicate that and so we're offering our 499 pounds 
until Friday because Friday is the last day we have our la our last session, and then on the back of that, once that um once we're done with that, then it goes up to six ninety nine. So if you want to take a okay, um, uh, if you want to take um advantage of the savings, um it will be ideal if you can actually fill out the form and indicate your interest, and then we'll send you the link for payment. Thank you. Vivian, do you remind uh do you mind do you mind repeating that information? All right. So I said, okay, so basically I was talking about what we would cover in the masterclass. So in the masterclass, we're going to be covering things like the hidden job market, how to communicate to network, how to become visible on LinkedIn, how to write an effective CV, how to interview, um, so that you're always actually being called back and being offered the job. Um, and basically how to so if you're new in a country, how do you know how to understand the job market how do you assess information where do you find information from and things like that so that's what we're going to be covering in our master class so it's more in depth um this is just a taste session of what what our linkedin class will look like but there's obviously more on linkedin that we haven't covered that we'll cover in the in the master class and i'm saying that we're offering a discount for those of you that have come in today of 4.99 and that discount will end but our next our last class is on Friday. So it will end over like on the Sunday because we give for eight hours. And then after that, it goes up to $6.99. Okay, so we have put the there's a link to the form if you're interested in the chat. And then yeah, if you populate that, then we'll send you a link to um for payment on the back of that. How long is the entire class? So the, it's actually for one week. So we, ha we have two sessions. We have the morning sessions, which is going to be running from 10 to 1. And then we have the evening sessions, which is going to be running from 6 to 9. So it's one week from May 22nd. Hmm. So in an event that one is not able to make those two times, is there any provision or possibility for, I don't know, Okay, so if I, the times are not convenient for you, right? That's what you're saying. So 10 to 1 or 6 to 9 wouldn't work for you. It, it's a bit trickier. Okay. Like, yeah. like for me, nights are better than in the morning because that time I'm in the office. So, so, six, so 6 to 9 should would work for you? Then 6 to 9 is not morning, though. It's actually night, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Yeah, 6 means uh, 5 my time, which means... Oh, oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the time difference. Yeah, sometimes we're um, even like uh, two hours behind. So that's, so that's like, like I, I think we have to think about that actually. Because I was thinking seven, so I was saying seven for people in the UK might be late seven to 10. Mm. Um, so, you are just thinking of the UK people, you're not thinking of us. I know, I'm thinking, I am actually thinking of you guys, but I keep forgetting that because mm -hmm. West African time so, um, is the mm -hmm. same. I didn't. Mm. I didn't realize Cameroon had a different time difference. I thought W. Aren't you guys yeah. in W A T? No. Okay. Sorry. 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 I am thinking about you guys. To be honest. <laughs> All right. We're probably gonna rethink the timings then. Um. So it will be in the evening though. And then if you can't make it, there'll be recordings for you to actually watch. So it will be sent to you. Okay. So the whole thing is just for a for a week. You said. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the week. Okay. All right. It's very hands-on though. So our classes are really hands-on where you get to do the work. So uh, the whole idea that end of the class, so for example, when we run the CV, you have your CV at the end of the class. I will teach you, oh gosh, I found this amazing way of how to write CVs. You guys will be blown away. So uh, that's all I have to say, but yeah. So if you're struggling with writing your CVs and thinking of having writer's block, we'll teach you how to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Any other question? No. And if you share, if you tell a friend that tells a friend that tells a friend and they come back to say Genica or Chifu, Chifu or Neameka or Francisca or Abiodun recommended us, then you also get a further discount. So yes, that's how we're doing it. Thank you. If there's no other question. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you for spending your Labor Day with us. Um, please, we're always wanting to, you know, to get feedback on how we've done, how we can improve. So um, if you can send us an email, um, info at slingstoneconsulting.com, I'll just put that in the chat to let us know how we did and how you found the um, taster um, session. It will be great, please. Thank you. 
So yes, um, I'll be doing. We will send. We will send the recording for sure. We will send that to you guys out today. I'm um, not today. I would. Um, we'll have to upload it in the cloud, but we'll send it out before the week is um over. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Namaka. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. That was really insightful. All right. Okay. Yeah. We know what. Maybe, maybe we should do this rather than sending me an email. Just put it in the chat because I can still save your chats. Um, what you found about today. And please be honest. Don't, don't, um, I, I'm not going to come looking for anybody if you, if you found it like, oh my God, I could have done better things in my morning, you know. So, yes. Just <laughs> let me know what you guys, how you guys, um, what, let, just give us some feedback, please. Thank you. Before we, we round off. I think this was quite helpful. I think like um, really intel for me, it was intellectually stimulating things okay. that you often think, oh, this is obvious. This is how it's supposed to be. Until someone says it, you're like, oh, man, I can do that better. I can do that differently. You mm -hmm. know, oh, I haven't been doing this. So huh? I feel like I, I feel like I've been playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like when I look at the skills I have and all that I could have amplified and maybe shared, like mm -hmm. I, I yeah, you know, so it's like I've been missing out on, on obvious things, maybe just needed some inspiration or something of that nature. So, yeah. Um, so I think this is quite helpful. And okay. even the fact that you go deeper into the the, the nitty gritties in the masterclass, you know, as mm -hmm. much as uh, the price is a bit <clears throat> ish, ish, but uh, <laughs> <we hope> that... <laughs> people <laughs> just say that we're actually very good. No, honestly, <laughs> oh. to be honest, right? So I'm, <laughs> I'm speaking for myself. I'm sure maybe my colleagues have a different view, but yeah, like uh, it, yeah, it's actually I, it's actually good value for money. I mean, I, I you say I'll yeah. say that because it's mine. But you when you come on, so when people come on our programs, and this is you know, I'm just I'm being honest here now. When people come on our programs, initially they're like, oh, you're so pricey, you're so pricey. Then when I come on our programs and they start to see the results, they're, they're actually some of them say to me, you don't charge enough. And I'm being this is me being honest with you, you know. So um um yeah, but. I'm sorry if you think that way, but when you come on the program, you're probably you're definitely gonna have a different different opinion. That I can tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Giddy, I'm laughing at yours. Uh, I didn't confirm it was. I didn't say your LinkedIn was shite. Actually, I just said it next to me. I never used. I never said that. I didn't even imply that. I just said that. Um, <laughs> we can do. Yeah, we we can do a lot more. That's what I said. <laughs> Thank you, Abiyojun. Thank you. That's interesting and engaging. Thank you so much. But um, Francisca, so I'm sorry you were late. So you came after all the activities that we had done our activities, but we'll send out the video and we'll also send out the PDF that we worked on today. So you can then, um, you can do it on your own. Okay, you can follow the video and you can do it on your own. But thanks, thanks for coming as well. Thank you. Um, uh, last for me, uh, mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. apart from next week, when is the other class? I'm just, I'm just still thinking in an event that I'm not able to join this one, but obviously i still want to take advantage of the discounts oh, okay so if I'm, yeah so the, actually so we're planning to run this every month so the employability masterclass will be done on, on, on the, every third week of the month every month just because we see that a lot of people surely a lot of people are migrating and moving into different new um countries and new countries and are struggling to get into the marketplace so we're going to do this for a long time right so every other month but uh, once we will share the dates with you and people, once we work, we work on that so that we have it all penciled in, and then you can then decide which one works for you. Okay, but we'll take into consideration the time differences. So thank you for that, okay. actually. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Genika. Thank you. Really appreciate that. <laughs> thank you very much. I like to smile, but the world is a happy place when I smile. So yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you guys have a lovely Labor Day. It was nice, um, nice meeting you. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Let's continue the conversation. And yes, ask me any question and I will answer to the best of my ability on LinkedIn. Um, yes, without giving too much away. <laughs> yeah, I want to see you in my class. Okay, all right, but no worries. Thank you so Thank much. You, all right, then. Thank, Thank you. So Thank all, you. Right. all right, bye. God bless. See you later. Bye. Bye.